For all practical intents and purposes, we are done with this build. However, I want to show you a bunch of different integrations that you can do to kind of enhance your site itself. I've been promising since the beginning to show you something with React, so I'm going to do that. We'll also then look at Tailwind. I'll then show you a couple other things like Party Town, which is a really cool script that will actually offload your external scripts on like a separate thread using web workers. And it's super easy to get started with with Astro. Then I'll show you how to get started with the CMS and just point you to a direction for something with Sanity. And then finally, I want to show you one thing about the CSS that you may want to customize uh, if you're going to use the CSS and heavily customize it. All right, let's go ahead and jump in. We'll start with React. So I'm going to come up here to the Astro website. If I just come over to integrations, I'm going to get access to a bunch of different integrations. Now, as you can see here, I've got a bunch of featured ones. What I want to do is look at, let's see, frameworks. And in here, I've got this Astro React. So let's start with this. And it couldn't be easier to get started. You literally just use this right here, and it will do everything for you. So I'm going to close down the server, type that in. And then, yes, I'm going to install all those things. And then it wants to update my Astro config. Go for it. And I'll hit yes one more time. And we're set. So just so you can see everything it did there, it updated my TS config and actually added the uh, the types for that. And then I also get, and then it also updated my Astro config right here and it tells me exactly what it did. Okay, so with that out of the way, that's all we have to do. All right, so now I can just come in here and say npm run dev. Now it's back up and running, but let me come over here and at the blog itself, let's open up a sidebar and I wanna add another component, except in this case, it's going to be a JSX component. So how about we call this counter.jsx? We're going to keep this real simple because this isn't really a React tutorial. I've got a little snippet that will act, add in a React arrow functional component. And you can see here it just says counter, and it's exporting this counter. Now I'll keep this real simple. I am going to go ahead and have some state in here. So we'll say count, and then set count. And I'll get this from use state. And as I start to type, you'll see I've got this snippet pulling in right here. If I click, it should import that, and it does up top. Now all I'm going to do is change this out to be a button. And then I'll say on click and let's handle this click. So we'll just say each time it's clicked, I want to set the count to the prev plus one. And then in the middle here, I just want this to be the count. So if you know React, this is about as simple as it gets. So I've got this uh, counter up and running. Let's go ahead and put it in the footer. And that way I can show you a couple things as well. So I'll take the footer down here and let's see, let me put it uh, in between these two. So all I'm going to do is start typing counter. And I think that pulls it in up top with the extension I happen to have, or you can just reference it like I have up top here, counter like this. And if I go ahead and save this, it looks like I had a problem. So let's come over here. Well, I have to initialize use state. So it's so simple that I forgot <laughs> to initialize the state. Okay, there we go. Now, if I come down here to the footer, it should be down here in the base. Now, Astro ships no client-side JavaScript. So if I click this, nothing is going to happen. So it's actually rendered the UI, but it hasn't allowed me to actually hydrate it with any kind of JavaScript. So that means it's not interactive, but it is visible. Now, why would this be important? Well, if you just like writing in React or Vue or Svelte or whatever, and you want to use Astro, you can actually write all your components in something like Vue or React, and it will render them to the DOM as just plain old UI elements. And if you just prefer that for your UI, perfect, you're done, and you've got plain HTML at the end of the day using your favorite UI framework. Then for the little bits and pieces where you actually need interactivity, you can actually hydrate them individually. So let me come back up here. Let's see. Over here, I'm not, I don't remember if it's right here. Yeah, right here. So let's look at the UI framework documentation. And here you're going to see that we can use a client directive to, to change the, how it is hydrated. Now there's a couple different options we have. Client load just means that that component's JavaScript will begin importing as soon as the page loads. Client visible is even a little bit smarter. It will actually not load the JavaScript until it's on the page. Now there is also a client only directive. You can see it does not render on the server, but it will render on the client when the page loads. So that's a little bit different. Um, these two will actually do what I just showed you, which is they'll actually render the UI immediately, even here in dev, which is they'll render the UI immediately. Now, let me come back over here and let's change this. Let's see, I can close this down. Here's where I will add that directive. So we'll say client load. And that's it. So if I save that, let me come down here. I should be able to click on this and it should now update state. And it does, which is pretty cool. Now let's look at the network tab so we can see exactly what's happening here. So if I go ahead and reload this page and let's look at everything, you can see I get 29 requests. So I'm actually getting in here React and you can see it right here. Let's go ahead and change this. Let me come all the way up top and 29 requests. Remember that let's change this to client visible. Now I've only got 22 requests now at this point. As I start to scroll though, you'll notice that when I get to the very end of the page where that React component is, immediately it will fetch everything else I need and now it's interactive. 
So if you've got something further down on your site that people may not interact with, there's no reason to make them load the JavaScript. So I love this client visible idea of hydration where you're only loading it if they absolutely need it. Now, one thing to think about here is there is not state that is stored like globally for the site. So if I come over here and scroll to the bottom, this is back down to zero. And Astro does talk about some state libraries you can use. I'll let you figure that out in their documentation here. I don't remember if it's on this page or not, but you can actually use different state libraries to actually maintain state across your components, but that's kind of beyond the scope of what I'm talking about in this tutorial. All right, so that's the first thing I wanted to show you, and that is how to get started with React. Now next, let's look at CSS. About the only framework that I would really use is Tailwind, so I want to show you how to get up and started with that. It's obviously very popular. Um, it's pretty easy to get going. You just do the same thing. So I'm going to add Tailwind right like this. So I'll say yes and install all those dependencies, and then it will generate my Tailwind config file for me, and then it will update my Astra config for me. So I'll say npm run dev. I'll shut that down, and let's look over here at what it created. So if I shut this down here, you're going to see it created this Tailwind config file for me automatically, including adding Astro files directly in here. And then it also updated my Astro config, and you can see it added Tailwind down here as well. So I love these CLI uh, commands because it means I don't have to type out a bunch of random stuff. It just takes care of it for me. Now that really is all there is to using Tailwind in Astro. So let me go ahead and close this down right here. And we're going to go back to the home page. And why don't I just come into this home page and let's destroy everything that we work so hard on inside these pages. Um, let's come right inside here. I'm just going to get rid of all of this. And we'll have some front matter. I don't know that we'll really use that. But let's say I have a paragraph here that says like, hi, Bob, or something like that. So if I save it, there we go. Somehow this thinks it's Arabic. All right, so I can close this down, but you can see it's actually using Tailwind because I'm not using that layout that imports my global style sheet. Now that means I can come in here and say something like text 3XL, and suddenly it's huge. I can say font bold. So that's all I have to do. As soon as I install that with MPX, Tailwind is just everywhere on my site. Now I had to remove everything we did because otherwise the global style sheet might conflict with some of the classes in Tailwind. So let me go ahead and get rid of this so that we've got the finished product that we worked so hard on. And that's how to get started with Tailwind. Let's come back to the integrations. I want to show you a couple of other things. I mentioned earlier that you can use MDX if you'd like to. And to do that, you just have to install it the same way we've been doing. And then you get access to all the power of MDX, which allows you to use JavaScript in your markdown files, essentially. But just a quick note that that's where you find that. And one of the things that can frustrate me the most about building static sites that are super fast is sometimes you have to include third-party scripts that didn't just slow down everything and they take away all your hard work. So you have to add like a Google Analytics script and suddenly your site's slow because it's blocking the main thread. Well, there's actually an open source project called Party Town. Let's see, where is this thing? Yeah, right here. That will take all of those things off the main thread using a web worker. Now, I don't totally understand how it works, but I don't really have to because it really honestly is super easy. I'm going to install this, and that's all I'm going to do. So I'll say yes, install that. And then I really should be letting you see what it's going to do. It's just adding this into the config. I say yes, and that's it. So now if I have any third-party scripts, it will take those off of the main thread, and it means that my site can be just as fast as I want, and then it will load those things on the side. The Astro docs are full of these integrations, and it seems more are added every day. I promised you two other things. One is how to get started with a CMS. And two, just one thing to think about customizing when it comes to the CSS on the site that we're building here. So if I come over here, let's just think through what we've done so far. Let me open up the sidebar over here. Inside of this blog, you might remember that we refactored this page itself so that it was more dynamic. That allowed us to have our pagination, and it basically will create these auto subroutes for us. Now, if you think about it, that's exactly what we would want to do if we were pulling in all the content from a CMS. We'd want to have some kind of dynamic routing that will then generate the pages we need and basically create them on the fly. So you can use this same kind of syntax to do that. Now, there are a bunch of different CMSs that they've actually created integrations for. There's Storyblock, and there are a couple others in here as well. What I want to do is just point out one by a guy named Jaden Irwin. Now, he also has a YouTube channel, and he's done a decent amount on Astro as well. You should go check him out. He's super helpful and clearly a very talented developer. But if you wanted to use something like Sanity, let me just show you how he does it in a real-life project. So as you might expect, if you come in here to pages, under blog, you're going to have the same kind of thing where you've got an actual dynamic page. Now what he's doing is he's getting all of his posts here from an API, and I'll show you that in a second. And then he's returning them all in a map with the params and with props. And then he's using the props down here, and the params would obviously be the URLs. All of this is coming from Sanity, and he's created a little helper library to do that for him. So let me come back out this way into the API. 
you'll see he's got this grok query, which is how Sanity works, or you can use grok with Sanity. And it returns this data here so that when he uses this function, get all posts, it's returning essentially an array of all of those posts. So it's very similar to what we did here, where we're getting a list of all of our posts, except in this case, it's not a local thing inside of a markdown file. It's actually from Sanity. And then I'm just looping through them and creating pages for each of those individual posts. Now, in some ways, it's more like the category page we have without these three dots because it's not creating these paginated pages. It's creating individual pages for each thing that's been passed in. So if you can fetch from any source, you have all the knowledge you need to dynamically generate pages based on what we did in this series. Now, one final thing, let me close all these things down and I'm gonna open up my global CSS file. Now, this has been untouched because I've told you not to touch it and it's been you know, kind of fragile as we've been moving and I've explained that to you just to kind of be able to focus on Astro. However, I do wanna show you one thing, just the way I've set this up. If I scroll down here, you'll see that in a root declaration, I have a hue color. This hue color is what colors all the stuff on the site. If you wanted to use this, you might wanna change this hue color to something else. And you can see how everything updates automatically. So maybe you like, like a slightly redder color, or maybe you like a really nasty green. Well, go for it. Maybe you want it to be pink or something more bluish. I'm gonna change mine back to that purple color at 235, but this hue is being used as an HSL value here. And the same thing applies when you move over to dark mode. So all these colors just adapt for you. So let's change this back to something like 20. And you can see how everything adapts for you based on whatever hue you've chosen. Now, I kind of like that color, so maybe I'll just leave it there for the end of this video. Now in the final video in the series, we're gonna actually publish this to Netlify. I'm gonna go ahead and remove all the things we did in this video so that it will be kind of what we built together before now. All right, I'll catch you there for the final build.